I saw that every country has a virtual influencer. Japan has one, Korea has one, but India there's a white space. We went independent, so me and my co-founder George, we founded this company Future Studios and we created Kyra, India's first virtual influencer. Kyra actually pitched herself to the sharks. She interacted with Aman also. And the view, the video, just the video has gotten over 5-10 million views. We went there for mentoring, we went there for marketing, we went there for the capital also. And we definitely get, got the mentoring and we definitely got the marketing. Hi everyone, welcome to the Master Camps podcast. My name is Swati and I'm the Director of Undergrad Program at Masters Union. Today, we are going to meet Himanshu Goyal, the co-founder of Future Studios. Himanshu is the creator behind India's first virtual influencer, Kaira. Himanshu has also appeared at the Shark Tank. In today's podcast, we will be covering Himanshu's journey so far, um, the appearance of Kaira at the Shark Tank, and the intersection of AI and marketing. Stay tuned for the conversation. Uh, so thank you so much, Himanshu, for coming today and taking out the time. Uh, you know, you in a young age, you've achieved so much, uh, launched India's first AI influencer. Uh, you've been on Shark Tank. I want to understand a little bit about your journey from being an engineer to then an MBA to then working somewhere to then becoming an entrepreneur. Walk us through your journey, please. Right. So like most of us in India, uh, I decided to go into engineering. <clears throat> At that time, like I really liked gaming, like most 90s kids, I went to home after school and played GTA Vice City or something. And I thought I want to learn coding and I want to even make games at some point. Uh, then I got into UIT, Punjab University. I for the In the first year, I tried my hand at coding, but I realized it was not for me. So definitely in that, like Punjab University only, I attended my classes, etc. But I realized that I'm not going into coding. Uh, parallelly, I was in a lot of things. I was uh, into reading. I was into writing also. So when I was in my engineering, I started working on uh, writing books, writing poetry. And I wrote my first novel called Tulsi. In While I was doing my engineering, uh, I also formed a book club in Punjab University. So I was doing a lot of things except coding. And in 2017, I had the option to go to all those Indian IT companies, but uh, I realized it was not for me and I applied for MBA. Uh, luckily, I got into Micah Ahmedabad. So that was my MBA college. I did marketing from there. Uh, parallelly, I was working on books. I also was very interested in social media. At that time, there was no such word as an influencer in India, at least there I think people were calling themselves outside of India. And I started a very small food blogging page, which had about 20, 30,000 followers. And gradually, year by year, I grew it 10, 10, 10,000 to 50, 60,000 when I was in college. So these parallel things were all going. And I feel like everything came in together uh, eventually. Uh, after college, uh, so few of us got placed into a marketing agency. And because I had this background of influencer marketing, uh, building my page, uh, I was in the influencer marketing division. This was 2019. And I personally worked with hundreds of influencers, dozens of brands. And this was a startup. So we almost set everything in operation. I did not have an entrepreneurial experience as such, <clears throat> but that startup really gave me a lot of experience. Uh, we found our first clients ourselves through our alumni network, through calling people and <clears throat> started with zero. And uh, that company eventually did pretty well. Influencer marketing was booming. So we worked uh, with hundreds of influencers, uh, some of the top tech influencers in the country. And uh, eventually we saw when we, while we were doing this, we realized that uh, it's sort of getting commoditized that, uh, everyone, every month there was a new agency coming up. So if we were charging a brand 10, 15% for our services, they would, someone else would come up and they will say that we'll charge 7.5%. So it was a race to the bottom. And we realized we need to do something to differentiate ourselves. One way was that you can create your own influencers, create your own channel, which many companies have now developed. We really wanted to do something innovative. 
and that's when we saw in the US there's a an influencer called Lil Michaela. So this person has three million followers. She has worked with Samsung. She has worked with Calvin Klein, but she does not exist. So all those followers are real. All those brands are real. All the revenue is real, but she does not exist. So uh, we studied more about this phenomena, and I saw that every country has a virtual influencer. Uh, Japan has one. Korea has one. But India, there's a white space, and we waited for three, four months that would someone else do it. uh and eventually we thought we might as well do it and we went independent so me and my co-founder george we founded this company future studios and we created kaira india's first virtual influencer so all instagram marketing interest in gaming and animation all of it came together sort of to create this virtual influencer very inspiring himanshu i think it's it's a typical story of be the change you want to see in the world um now um you know with your story what i understand is um that you saw a gap um, and and the, the problem in your current company was it was a race to the bottom every agency was a uh, same so people were just snatching business from each other and the true power lied with the influencers correct and then as a marketing agency you wanted to own that power because if in the value chain you do not have that command then you will not have the margins and to have an influencer of your own no. then transitions into hey let's have a virtual influencer that you can completely control right now we are very fascinated with it help me understand how is a human influencer different from a virtual influencer right so of course there are a lot of differences one is that virtual influencers do not age so at least for now kaira has been 21 for the past 3 years uh, change anything about her change any uh, of her clothes instantly she does not get sick she does not sleep so there are of course many differences uh, i i like despite all the differences we believe uh, eventually the storytelling matters so it's there are many advantages but you can make a bad virtual influencer uh, or you can make a very good virtual influencer similarly human content can be bad also or human content can be great also ultimately the user does not care if they are seeing a virtual influencer or they seeing a real human it, you have to provide entertainment you have to provide informative content then only you get the result so despite all the advantages uh, because most of the people say how will you uh make a virtual influencer relatable this person does not exist we don't believe that to be true we, like movies have been there for centuries and people relate to characters more than real human beings like people fall in love with book characters right so and i have also written books so like even george he's a musician uh, so he writes songs uh so we believe a lot in the power of storytelling and connecting with people and that's how we are approaching kaira that we want her to be relatable aspirational to people uh, and we want her to be interesting enough that people follow and of course there are a lot of advantages uh, we really find it fascinating from a marketing perspective we are able to tell stories that we imagined were not possible so for example the one of the first campaigns we did it was in a science fiction environment she was on a spaceship she was discovering the future of audio it was for boat uh, and it was their neck band so the theme was the future of audio and we used the future of influencers to show the future of audio so we love the creative freedom it gives us compared to a regular shoot doing it in virtual production and recently like we don't believe that real being like real creators cannot use this as well i think with cgi we are seeing real creators use these technologies to create awesome content so even they are creating science fiction content and some of the indian creators are really creating like hollywood level content just uh, using these tools fed so i hear a lot of positives right she doesn't sleep she doesn't need rest um are there any constraints were there projects where you said hey because we have a virtual influencer it's kind of not fitting in right so there are two aspects to it one is the personality that we have set for her so we are very strict about the brands we take that it has to make sense in the storyline of kaira that she is this kind of person she'll do this brand only second is the actual physical thing so skin care might not make sense for a virtual influencer because she does not have real skin and skin care depends on results that your skin is getting better and you can show it 
uh, how we see it if you are creating creative enough you can find ways to showcase it for example uh, if the skincare has some vitamin c product maybe you show the journey of how you created the product with the virtual influencer you don't talk about the results but you can still showcase the ingredients she goes to some farms and sources the ingredients and create the product so if you're creative enough and if the story fits we can showcase it uh, but we really like to be selective about brands and only do them if it makes sense for the character great now we've seen kaira collaborate with very big brands right amazon boat how did you end up getting these uh, collaborations right so if initially when we started we did not know like if the indian audience would accept it yeah because we started with zero followers uh, and zero content we did not know if people would follow her even luckily we did get a lot of following initially just with images and once we we did a post uh, which was kaira in jaipur so she was walking in a fort uh, and her dress was a lehenga that post got a million for a uh, million views and we got thousands of followers eventually uh, just by making content we got about 50000 70000 and we were at a point then brands started approaching us so first we built the distribution and because of our experience in influencer marketing we have already worked with a lot of brands it was easy to get the first second brand after building so for 6 months we did not do any brands even we got approached by some smaller brands but we stuck to it that we want to cross 100000 followers and then before doing brands any will come to us yes and then you maintain that premiumness saying we only work with these kind of brands it's not just uh the the biggest brands we are open to working with startups also but if the story makes sense yeah so you very very clear on persona right. the brand fit very similar to how human influencers right. work right everybody have their own forte and they stick to that right when they're a fashion influencer they're only doing fashion right. and that kind of gives you the right set of audience as well absolutely fair now let's talk about your shark tank journey right um, i think it's a huge platform uh, that uh, startups usually get uh, so we would love to know a little bit of what happened um, what happened behind the scenes how did you end up at shark tank uh, tell us about your experience right so of course like most entrepreneurs in india we watch shark tank season 1 season 2 i even i'm a fan of the us shark tank and <clears throat> i always had this idea that if we go to shark tank this was way before we even thought of it uh we want kaira to pitch herself to the sharks we don't want us to be pitching because that makes the most sense for the product and we always had this idea and finally for season 3 we applied because season 2 it was we barely had a few followers uh, we had some momentum before season 3 and the process usually how it goes there's a form and then you do a video you send a video to the shark tank team and then you do an in person audition and then you're selected for the shoot so we were very clear that this is the idea that kaira will pitch herself to the sharks and i think they found the idea interesting we are sort of a creator in this category and luckily we were selected and we went for shoot in mumbai uh, it was around october and it was definitely one of the best experiences of our startup journey uh, and we were just aired last week and the response has been tremendous so kaira actually pitched herself to the sharks she interacted with aman also and the view, the video just the video has gotten over 5 10 million views over social media like everyone congratulated us so many people have been part of our journey so far and when it aired so it's one of the best experiences the pitch itself we did not get the deal but the uh, feedback we got uh, the comments that we got from the sharks were very valuable like we felt in the one one and a half hours they helped us uh, with our vision how, what should we so we got a lot of conviction that after getting out we immediately went back that this is what we need to do we need to start working on it so it was really valuable feedback like a lot of people say that you go to shark tank just for the marketing we did not believe it to be to be the case we went there for mentoring we went there for marketing we went there for the capital also and we definitely get, got the mentoring and we definitely got the marketing so let me let me pick one by one let's talk about the marketing first right so after the episode right. came out on the television uh, i'm sure uh, the followers increased right. so what has been the business impact for the episode aired the followers were 225000 approximately 
uh, we have gotten an increase of 50,000 followers. So it's right now 275,000. Uh, it was just not from the TV telecast. I think this, this is very important for Shark Tank brands also, or if in the future you get to be on Shark Tank. We use that footage very well. So immediately when we were aired, we created clips of it, we created memes of it, and we got that initial 10, 15,000 boost. But after we use the clips, we got the remaining 30, 35,000, and it is still growing. Yeah. So that was one of our key metrics, and we are very happy with the response. Uh, one of our goals for Kyra is to make her the most popular virtual influencer in the world. So right now, Michaela is the most popular one with around 2.8 million followers. And we think in India, so the number one country of Instagram users is India. So ideally, we should be on top, right? We have more users than US. Uh, even in Asia, currently, Emma has more followers. She has about 390,000 followers. So this is one of our core metrics that we want to become the biggest virtual influencer in the world. And Shark Tank has definitely helped. And we believe that this footage holds value for life. So once you get to be on Shark Tank, uh, for example, it has helped us get talent also. So if a, if a potential uh, talent knows that this company has been on Shark Tank, they are more likely to join. They understand the vision better. It has helped us get partners also. So that footage helps you through life. So it definitely is a wonderful experience just besides the pitch and the after effects of the pitch right. as well. Got it. Just summarizing on the marketing side, uh, 50K followers provided. In just a week. In just yeah. a week provided, um, you do the right, yes. uh, you know, use the footage, put it on social media, all of that. It's a platform you really have to capitalize it to the fullest potential. Fair. And now let's talk about mentoring. Right. You mentioned um, it, the one, one and a half hours that you spent on television. We probably see 10 to 15 minutes. Right. So tell us what goes behind the scenes. So it's completely closed door. Like it, they treat it like a closed door conversation that just like with any we have done investor meetings outside of Shark Tank also. So it's just like any other investor meeting. Obviously, you prepare this pitch. So they give you about two to three minutes that this is your uninterrupted pitch, whatever you want to say, no one will interrupt you. So that was the part where Kyra pitched to the sharks and then we came in and it introduced the concept. After that, they can talk about anything. There's, it's an open conversation. So it went very organically. Honestly, it was all a blur. So there, there are huge lights, huge cameras. This was the first time we shot for TV and one hour went away like that. Like we didn't even realize. Uh, and we like we were very passionate about our venture. They criticized us that this is what you could be doing. The main discussion, because it's such a new topic, it was about the concept. So in our pitch, we were explaining the concept a lot. And particularly Anupam understood the concept very quickly. So one of the things that I have realized about good investors is that they can understand your business in one, two minutes. Yeah. Like you spend days and months and years uh, figuring out the business and they hear the pitch and in two minutes they tell you that this is your business this is how it will work uh, so he really gave us good advice Anupam, Dipender, Aman and we are implementing some of the advice and we are seeing the results so it, it was a crazy experience like one one and a half hours and the weight of it is also very challenging so we shot in October and we were aired in March yeah. so we were waiting six months wow. and we did not know if we would be aired or not right so it it's not necessary that if you're sh if you have shot for the shark tank that you'll be it. So the weight was also quite challenging, but we were patiently building our business, whether it is or not. Uh, do you want to share some of the key takeaways or how that experience has now changed your strategy or the way you're taking the business forward? So I think we were going in a lot of directions. We always knew whatever the sharks had suggested us, but it gave us a lot of conviction that uh, you know there are a lot of noises whenever you're talking with investors etc that maybe every investor will want to tell you a different direction that maybe this is the direction you should go to and there is a direction that you feel in your heart that this is what i want to do uh, and thankfully what the sharks suggested was that similar direction which maybe the other investors were not saying so it gave us a lot of conviction now this is what we want to do and let's put our head down and work towards it. So it really helped us in that way. Um, now, shifting gears a little bit, um, you know, I want to talk about artificial intelligence. Um, 
uh, the last one year, two years, we have seen a huge wave of artificial intelligence, a lot of applications. If I talk about specifically marketing as a domain, um, help us understand some of the applications of AI in marketing, please. So I think AI is something that will uh, play a big part in all aspects of life, not just marketing. But marketing was one of the first uh, things that it's uh, people started using AI for. Uh, there are three, four things that I see people are already using it. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one is brainstorming. So now what I'm seeing and what I'm doing also Every idea, so in marketing you get briefs, uh, you get concepts, it starts with AI, it starts with a conversation with ChatGPT or Google Gemini, etc. So in brainstorming, it one of the most difficult parts of uh, in an agency is the brainstorming, but it really helps you kickstart that. So on the strategy level, people, and you talk to AI just like it's your friend, right? So you tell us, you tell like for, now you can talk to Kyra also using AI. So you tell Kyra, hey, this is me. I am working in this agency. This is my client. This is their product. This is the link. Study it and give me this idea for this platform. You talk to it like either your co-employee or your uh, team member or your friend even. So that's how it starts. And it, we were very surprised with the level of ideas it was giving. Uh, it currently we don't feel it understands the nuances that well. So definitely the human being is required, but it uh, helps with the busy work a lot. So the brainstorming part. Then comes the execution. Once you have given the idea, you've made the storyline. Now uh, with copy, we feel it's very good. Like the kind of copy it generates, we have gotten thousands of followers with it. People are getting revenue from it. So it's surprisingly very good with the creating the copy. The images, it's more of a debate. Uh, that if they are good or not, whether a good designer can make a better one. What I feel is that it's going to be a game changer. It's already a game changer for small businesses because big brands have huge teams. They can hire whatever designer, whatever agencies they need. But if you are a very small team with AI, you can bridge that gap and you can create very good creatives. Video, everyone is currently seeing, waiting for Sora to come. Uh, currently, it's not available for public use. And we are also working on a lot on the video side on how we can use AI. I think that's uh, still on, in the early stages, but it's going to change videography again. Uh, and I believe it's going to be huge for small businesses. Fair. So what I hear you say is that if somebody is in the domain of marketing, um, they should definitely know how AI is going to disrupt their job, right? Uh, now, for our young audiences, right, who are either switching to marketing or are already in marketing and they want to learn um, about AI and want to get some skills, though we have, you know, courses, we have a course on digital marketing with Shebang and all of that. But what is your advice uh, to those people who are trying to get into this industry? I think immediately start learning about AI what, with, through courses, through application, I think the best courses are that you have some application in process because whether you like it or not, AI is coming and it's marketing, it's general work. Everyone will be using AI. It's similar to uh, your Microsoft Excels or Words, right? Most For most jobs, you need to learn those. You need to learn your Google Docs or Microsoft Word. I think AI will be a similar skill that you need to learn to be competitive in the workplace. But do you think AI will replace humans? So... Uh, like it's too early to tell. Um, I think like from my perspective, uh, what I would really wish that we use AI as a force for good. So that's what we try to do with Kyra also. Like people ask us, will Kyra replace influencers? Yeah. We have actually hired a team of five to six people who are artists themselves, content creators themselves. So we see ourselves more of artists rather than replacing someone. And we think the... Uh, onus is on us how we use AI and how we consciously not fire people just because AI can do a job we should instead have an approach approach of how we can increase productivity of the already existing people so that's my perspective uh, I'll not be you know too optimistic and say there's no danger because already like I said the kind of copy it generates maybe if you needed five to ten people to generate the copy 
मे बी टू पीपल कैन डू द सेम जॉब विद ए आई सो माई एडवाइस वुड बी टू लर्न दीज स्किल्स बिफोर डेफिनेटली इट विल रिप्लेस पीपल हु डो नॉट लर्न ए आई राइट करेक्ट इट्स लाइक सेंग हे इफ यू डोंट नो हाउ टू मेक स्लाइड इन अ पाप वाइट देन एट योर जॉब समबडी हु डज नो दिस इज गॉन टेक योर जॉब राइट इट्स अ स्किल इट्स अ टूल एक्जैक्टली fair and you also mentioned that people ask you whether kaira will replace influencers right um now what i'm assuming is that behind kaira there is a huge content team right that's collaborating with brands that's deciding what the story is going to look right. like what kaira is going to do right. in the reel or you know whatever she is doing so um how much uh, of ai are you using or is it just the face and the outside uh, you know uh, that that's ai and it's virtual and behind the scenes it's all human generating right. that content so there are two aspects to it one is the visual element so we have gone into the direction of cgi assisted by ai so we use on help us understand cgi as right. well cgi is computer generated imagery so all the marvel movies that you see avatar movies that you see we are all built on cgi it's a bunch of people on computers making all those amazing visuals like animation right exactly like animation so the visual element we have gone to cgi artists so we have hired very talented cgi artists all of them are from india uh, and they work on the visual part we have fashion designers helping them we have storytellers helping them that this is the story this is the post that's going uh, we use ai as an assist feature that certain plugins will help the designers create something the ai part comes in when you talk to kaira so you can dm kaira and talk to her about anything and that's powered by ai so we have fed all the story data all the post all the content all the information about kaira uh, and she replies organically that and it's instant because it's it's theater. instant we can even delay it like she, okay. she has some attitude she replies after 20 Fair. seconds etc so we have actually set a delay uh, of Fair. replying so it feels more human Yeah. and it everything happens natively on instagram you don't have to go to some other app uh, yeah. and we get all sorts of dms maybe i'll share some of the dms you can put them up as yeah. screenshots yeah. but it's not just like uh, so one of the obvious aspects is that hey uh, this is my outfit will this what do you suggest accessorizing it with so she can help you with that we have those sorts of dms also but there are dms like i just had a breakup what should i do <laughs> there's all sorts of dms and surprisingly good uh, the ai is handling them surprisingly good oh, wow so it's still in the evolving phase we have had about 100 500 conversations we have kept it as a beta right now uh, but we'll be launching it uh, to all her followers uh, and we see it as an ai companion that you're following the story of this character yeah and parallel you're talking to her and this is where real influencers they cannot talk one to one to each of the followers this is where we think there's a huge advantage that you can talk to Good this day. personality you're following uh, she's available to you all the time she's sort of like a companion to you so that makes me more curious right the fact that you have developed this influencer which is a virtual human if today somebody wants to get into this business of virtual influencer how difficult it is i mean there are conversations that there are open source tools you know anybody can make ai chatbots these days so how much of real engineering you know was needed versus how much of it was just plug the different source open source tools and you know so today it's done. easier than ever okay uh, when we built kaira cgi was a huge challenge but now there are generative ai tools where you can instantly create and it's going to get easier with sora coming in you can create videos also we believe it's easy to create a virtual human but it's very difficult to create a virtual influencer so you can create a persona you can start posting content but how will you tell that consistent story and get the followers etc so that is where we come in we believe in the power of storytelling we believe in ip Uh, and that's what we primarily work on because we think technology will be democratized eventually everyone will have the same tools and how you can differentiate yourself is with the storytelling the storytelling and the brand exactly awesome great any last advice for um, the budding marketers uh, today who are watching this podcast i think uh, again i would say whether we like it or not ai is coming for us all yeah 
uh my suggestion but don't be scared right that's what you're saying like we try to use it as a force for good but yeah. you know everyone is not the same hmm. and like people are already using deep fakes to impersonate someone yes so i like that would be my message like use ai use it for good use it to enhance your work and it's a tremendous technology uh, right. and definitely this is the time to learn it uh, before someone else comes in and takes away your job said well i love the conversation himanshu and thank you so much for coming all the way and sharing the insights with us thank you for having me thanks